waiting for his greater spire to finish, then he's going to pop out a ton of Broodlords and just go for such a massive push. He's also taking the gold base, also retaking the base that was killed by the Dark Templar, as well as an additional base in the bottom right-hand corner. Violet, just the longer this goes, the more control he has over this game. Yeah, and you can, you can tell that Violet, I mean, he's still not happy with his economy. He's been starving in gas. I mean, he's making 12 Broodlords. That is an incredible amount. The Mothership is almost done here for Oxlav, and that'll be his huge defensive ace in the hole that, you know, I don't think Violet is aware of just yet. But, uh, I mean, Violet should be okay. I mean, he does have uh, a... F well, actually, he only has one Corruptor left. If he's not careful, that Mothership could actually do a lot of damage because he doesn't have much anti-air here. Yeah, I mean, he has one Corruptor and a couple Hydras. He does have that Overseer, though, so he'll be able to see all the cloaked units and take care of everything on the ground. But, you know, a Mothership, an extremely strong unit. I don't know if it's really really going to be game-changing at this point, but, you know, if Axelov had any chance, this Mothership is going to give it to him. Oh, and the Mothership has arrived, and it is somewhere. It is in the main here, and oh, no, it better not get intercepted here by Violet's army. And it looks like Axelov pushed himself into a small corner here. That's the only thing he can do. And it looks like the Mothership has been revealed, and it looks like the Hydras are chasing after it very fiercely, but Axelov is going to call oh. good game. As, uh, I mean, he realized, as soon as he saw that massive, massive amount of Broodlords, it doesn't matter if he has one mothership, everything is going to die there. Yeah, I think, sadly, that game really came down to those Zerglings in the beginning. Axelav did a valiant job of struggling back into that game, but those Zerglings just denied so much economy for a Protoss player, and just it just set him a little bit too far behind. Yeah, so, uh, you know... Playing from behind is definitely not the best of those scenarios. We're going to go, guys, really quick to a commercial break. And uh, when we come back, game number two between Oxlav and Violet on MLG Shire Temple. This is Frode and Bonk with the Playhem Show Match Series number four. Wow, what a first game. Shattered Temple should be pretty interesting, though. <laughs> Shattered Temple should be good. And, uh, oh, I forgot. I'm going to start playing music in between our commercial breaks. Okay, that might be good. I'm never quite sure, because I know some people can still hear us, so I feel like we have to say something. No, not at all, man. Violet is up 1-0. to zero. Just tell me when commercial's over on your half. Uh, I'm not even looking at the stream right now. I probably should be. Um, I don't know, because I didn't have the stream open, so I'm assuming we're good. Gotcha, gotcha. Guys, welcome back. To game number two, and we have Violet versus E.G. Oxlov. Violet, he's here in the top center, you know. And uh, I, it took me, <laughs> it took me a very, very long time to realize that Violet chose purple uh, because <laughs> that's just what his name is. And it took me a very long time. You know, I wasn't sure if he named it after you know, like a like a character in like an anime or like maybe like a really cool band or something. But uh, I don't know. It's kind of clever, man. But uh, here in the bottom, we have Oxlov. He's a red Protoss, and he has he's has to come back, you know, a little bit stronger than that game. Has to be really careful, because again, just like we were talking about at the very end of the last game, when uh, those Zerkings got in, that just really had a bad start to his mid game. Oh man, I hate to interrupt you, but we actually already have Violet going for us an eight pool here, so he's going to put on some really early aggression in this second game. Ooh, that's a very good observation indeed. Yeah. And, uh, and Axelav actually isn't scouting the cross positions first, so he's not going to know about this for a long time. If he doesn't get in there pretty soon, he could be caught completely off guard by this. Yeah, but at the same time, he isn't going for uh, any kind of fast nexus, so he does have more or less area to work with in terms of, uh, you know, he doesn't have to build as many buildings to wall off, so if he can get a good scout in, he should be able to still prepare for it as long as he does the right things. The problem is... That, uh, you know, again, just like you said, Zerg's had a lot of time to prepare for this. Violet is, you know, he's being sneaky, man. And when you see something like this, Bonk, <clears throat> what do you do to personally react to this? Well, the, the worst part about this is Axelive actually went for an extremely late gate. Instead of getting a gate on 12, he decided to not cut pro production, which makes his gateway so much later. So Axelive doing the right thing here, getting a forge down. But with a 14 gate, he's not going to have the zealot out in time. These Zerglings are actually going to get there. It's going to be a desperate scramble to wall off the top of his ramp here. He is getting a pylon down, so he should be okay. But at this point, you know, he's cutting probe production while our Zerg's going to be able to drone freely for quite a long time. 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, Oxlav, <clears throat> I mean, he's got to do something here to really manage the damage. The Zerglings are going to do a lot of things. The good thing is that he put the pylon in a non-exposed area, so that only, I think, one Zergling can attack at a time, and as a result, Oxlav is going to have that gateway take the brunt of the damage. No cannon from Oxlav just yet. He just really wanted to, uh, you know, force the Zerglings to attack something, but for, finally the first cannon comes out. Zeld is now out as well. Can Oxlav hold this position? It looks like Violet's already droning at this point. He's not really trying to fall with more Zerglings. In fact, he's just, again, trying to get those Zerglings in the base of Protoss and really cause a lot of damage here. Oh man, Axlav actually needs a probe up there to remake this wall as soon as the gateway goes down. He's pulling his probes now, but it might be too little too late, and these Zerglings are streaming into the base. This is absolutely brutal. Axlav has already lost all of his tech. He has no gateway, nothing except probes and a couple zealots to deal with this. He even lost his forge. Meanwhile, like you said, our Zerg is just droning so hard. I love the fact that Axlav actually put a pylon at the Zerg's natural here, so the Zerg can't get too far ahead economically, but the drones are going to tell the tale at this point. Yeah, I mean, actually, Violet is not even ahead in uh, workers yet, but that's kind of why the whole idea he has Zerglings. He doesn't have speed on the way just yet, because keep in mind, he did invest a lot into that early pool. Oxlav is not in a terrible, terrible position, but he, again, losing both of those tech roots hurts a lot. Looks like he's going to immediately just actually go see if he can go for a Nexus. Wow. And uh, that's pretty ballsy here. And in fact, actually, he's just going to resume normal production just with full scouting information from Zerg. He's going to have these two Zealots see how much uh, defense they can do here. Yeah, the more I think about this, I actually love this out of Axlev right now, because he knows his opponent is not all in inning him at this point. He knows his opponent is now trying the drone super hard. So his response is to actually put down a Nexus. That's absolutely brilliant. And oh no, Violet goes to put that hatchery down and realizes he can't. Has to produce swings <laughs> immediately. As long as Axlev can defend this Nexus, he should be okay. <clears throat> yeah, and I mean, he has two Zealots alive and kicking. I mean, they got full shield, so he's per perfectly prepared for this. And Violet, I mean, uh, this is actually turning out to be a pretty normal game from this point. I mean, Oxlav is a little bit behind in workers, but he's going to have his Nexus done much quicker. And, of course, that pylon is such a, a, no a nuance. Is it nuisance? A nuisance. nuisance. I, was like, nuance. I was like, nuance. I was like, nuance. Nuance. Nu yen. I was like pulling out Asian last names. I don't even know what was going on. But, uh, now you got it. Yeah, man, I got it. And it looks like there's Zerglings here. Not really going to do that much damage, and I like that Oxlav has been really able to preserve his probe count. He has lost a couple more drones, but for the most part, only five uh, workers lost for these couple minutes. Not terribly bad, because, again, he has those double next eye to really replenish it. Yeah, I mean, Axlav actually looking pretty good right now. The weirdest thing for both these players is I don't think either of them has, excuse me, been in this situation before. It's going to be uncharted chair territory for both of them. I don't think Violet planned to have a Nexus go down immediately after that pressure, and I don't think Axelab planned to have that pressure happen, so yeah. both these players kind of winging it at this point, but this is a lot of Zerglings coming across the map right now. Oh, and Axelab sees it with his probe, so he is going to be at least semi-prepared this time. He does have one single sentry, wants to do his best to absolutely prevent the uh, Zerglings from coming down, even pulling probes to go to the natural, just in case, and also they can just go to mine at the natural, and if anything ever happens, Axelab are Already starting to form a bigger wall here, putting his uh, gateway to safely have a little snuggle against uh, the cannons there. Looks like Oxlav finally dealing with that last Zergling in his base. Violet pulls back here, and he's still making a lot of Zerglings, which does mean he's going to go for some heavy aggression, especially with the Baling nest up here. Oh yeah, this pressure is not off by any means. He's going to morph in a ton of Balings and go for the break here. I love that Axlav is walling oh. off these cannons with the gateway, though. This is going to make it much easier to hold. Axlav needs to get more sentries immediately, though, or he's going to be in trouble. Yeah, but Warpgate is not... Uh, close to finishing just yet because again during this whole time all of his tech has been delayed the banes are on the way and Oxlav he's gonna need some miracle defense again he's gonna be caught again completely by surprise there's a huge number of banes here Bong ready to explode here oh wow what a great first force first force field there but all these Zerglings are streaming in now. The Zealots are going to get picked off by the Banelings, and I have no idea if Axlav is going to be able to hold this right now. Oh, and Axlav does manage to deal with almost all the Banelings, and oh no, oh, runs a no. bunch of his workers into the Baneling, and that hurts a lot. He actually could have saved a bunch of them, but as a result, a good 8 to 10 of them died just there. And, uh, you know, now he's behind in workers very significantly. Now, Violet is free to drone up. He's droning up 11 drones, and he's now going to be up 46 
to 20, and that's going to sting a lot. Oxlav, he almost dealt with it perfectly, and if he didn't lose those probes, I think he actually would have been a, a lot better off. He would have had, you know, at least 30, 40, 30 some probes, and would have been in a much better situation. But man, losing those many stings a lot here, Bonk. Yeah, Axlav was absolutely fine until the very last second there. He had, I mean, he lost, what, 15 probes in that? He was on equal probes as his opponent with decent tech out on an expansion, and he didn't need those probes in the battle at that point. He could have pulled them home and just let the Bailings blow up on a single Zealot. Instead, though, his, his economy is hurting so much. 28 to 43 probes, he is desperately far behind now. Yeah, I mean, he, he is going to be safe for a while. Uh, at least for the very near few minutes because Violet's been droning up a lot. But Violet, we've seen it before, he's not grabbing a third. Again, Shadow Temple, a little bit harder to grab your third just because rocks are always in the way. Uh, thank you, Dustin Browder. And it's going to be, uh, I mean, he's going to tech up to Laird just like he did last game, but he has been keeping a very healthy drone count. Going to go up to uh, close to 60 very momentarily. And he is going for yet another Hydralis den here, Bonk. Interesting, yeah. I, you know, I watched Violet's stream a good bit, and I didn't really see that much Hydra play out of him. So this might be something specifically tailored for Axelive. Maybe he knows Axelive doesn't go Colossus super early. Uh, but either yeah. way, these Hydras, they could do a ton of damage. I wonder if he's going to march him across the map again, or if he's actually going to go ahead and get some sort of drop. And we do see, oh no, Axelive again going for the Stargate. <laughs> that is the absolute wrong choice. Yeah, the thing is, I th Axelive has shown that he loves Phoenixes a lot, or Phoenixes, whatever you want to call it, Feces. I don't, I don't even Fini. know. Phoenai. But uh, Axelive has shown that he loves Phoenix play, and Hydras, of course, directly, directly counter that if you can you know, get a good count up early on. And, uh, I mean, Oxlov, he's been going Stargate every game thus far. Of course, it's only been two games, but showing that he really favors that play, and he's really been wanting to incorporate it, but, I mean, with going high just directly off of two base and getting upgrades very early with the Evo Chamber, these just are going to be a very strong, fearsome force. And uh, Oxlov, I mean, he looks like he wants to take out those rocks, but he's going to get caught off by surprise again because I just feel like, you know, these just naturally counter a lot what he's doing here. Yeah, and like you said, first Phoenix already being Krenna boosted. Axelov loves these Phoenixes. Violet sees the Stargate, though. He has to be happy with that. Even if Violet doesn't pressure with these Hydras, Axelov has absolutely nothing to go on the offensive with. That means Violet's going to be able to take an extremely easy gold base here. Also, probably a fourth and fifth base as soon as he wants to. Also, Violet very smartly spreading creep on Axelab's third. This is going to delay that expansion ever so much. And oh, look at this. At the same time, these stalkers go up to deal with this Overlord. The Hydras are going to come streaking across the map. Oh, and that's going to be very, very bad news for our Protoss player indeed. Violet already revealing that he has Hydras. The Hydras do snipe that cannon as soon as uh, you can say hello. And Oxlav, he's going to lose a couple gateways here. He's just really biding his time. Doesn't really want to force himself out of engagement because, again, he has a kind of an awkward engagement area because he's walled himself in. He's going to do some force fields, but has to be careful not to lose these sentries. A lot of them are full energy, and a couple of them already went down. Yeah, those sentries being in the front was absolutely brutal for Axlav here. He does get some good force fields off now, trapping quite a few units, but more and more Hydras are just streaming in. Look at the creep spread from Violet. It's all in a straight line to Axlav's base, so these Hydras reinforce that much quicker. Axlav losing cannons, losing tech here. He's going to lose his forge before too long. And oh no, his gateways are now powered down. He is in so much trouble. Aw oh, man, Axlav losing a lot of supply as well. And not only that, but he's engaging in bad spots. His stalkers, half of them are not even firing because they're stuck behind uh, the gateways. They're stuck behind each other. And as a result, the Hydras have a superior concave. And Axlav has really been pushed back here. Probes are being pulled. That's always a sign of a uh, very strong desperation. Violet taking out everything, even the Hydras getting their melee on as Axlop calls good game. And you know what, man? Going down 2 0 this quickly, Bonk, that always stings here. Yeah, absolutely brutal. And, and the thing is, Axlop has to be kicking himself. If he only hadn't lost those probes, his economy would have been so much better. He would have had so many more units to defend with there. But, you know, as a pro player, he's been in this situation, and you can recover from that. It's not like he played his best and got absolutely crushed. He knows the mistake he made. He just has to go back and fix it and try again. And this is a best of seven, so he's still got some time. Being down to nothing really hurts. But, you know, next map, an ultra macro map, and that's where Axelab really shines. All right, guys. Yeah, so uh, hopefully he can turn around for this game. We're going to go to another quick commercial break. 
But uh, when we come back, we can see game number three between Oxlav and Violet. Don't go in there, guys. Play match show, play hem show match series four number four. Game number three coming up next. <laughs>